Hello friends, today we are going to discuss design of flexible payments for low volume rural roads as given in IRC SP 72 2015. Low volume roads as defined in this code are those where design traffic for a design life of 10 years does not exceed 2 MSA. This code is a revised version of 2007 guidelines and it includes the procedure for design of new roads as well as for upgradation and rehabilitation and payment design is included up to 2 MSA. Subgrade strength is measured in terms of CBR and it is divided into 5 categories from S1 to S5 depending upon strength of the soil. The earlier edition of this code considered design traffic up to 1 MSA. In this revision, two more traffic categories T8 and T9 are included and therefore traffic is divided into total 9 categories. Thickness design is as per ASTO guide for low volume roads with 50% reliability and a terminal serviceability index of 2 and initial PSI of 4 is taken. Design of the road is a three step process. First you determine the traffic, then assess the subgrade strength in terms of CBR and then determine the pavement thickness and composition using the pavement catalog. In traffic estimation, only commercial vehicles with gross laden weight of 3 tons and above are considered and traffic in this code is considered in terms of equivalent standard axles and they are obtained using fourth power law as we have discussed in, in uh, determination of vehicle damage factor also that is by dividing the axle load by 80 kN or by 146 0.6 kN for single and tandem axle loads and then raising to power 4. Traffic growth rate is estimated either through local inquiries or by establishing economic metric models as given in IRC 108. And if there is no specific information available at site, then traffic growth rate can be assumed as 6%. In the case of new roads, the estimation of traffic cannot be made based on traffic count. In such cases, a road in the vicinity area and with a similar condition is taken and traffic count is made on that particular road. Now, traffic on rural roads is not constant uniform throughout the year and there are harvesting seasons also during which the traffic is very high. Now, if Capital T is taken as the number of vehicles per day during lean period and there can be two or three harvesting seasons and each harvesting season remains there for let us say time T and traffic during this harvesting season is n times the traffic in lean season. Now what is assumed here that this traffic will build up it will take about 40% of time t to reach to the peak and peak will remain for 20% time and then again it will fall to the normal traffic t and therefore this traffic harvesting season or you can say peak traffic remains for 0.6 times t where t is the harvesting season time and the total number of traffic will be t that is your traffic in lean period into 365 plus 2 NT into 0.6 T. Now NT here is the peak traffic that is multi N is a multiplier of T and because there are two harvesting seasons here so it's a 2 and each harvesting season will remain for 0.6 T and therefore it is 0.6 T and this with this equation you can find out what is AADT that is N upon 365 or you can say T plus 1.2 NT into small t upon 365 where capital T is the lean season traffic, NT is the peak season traffic and small t duration of harvesting season. Let us take one example just to illustrate the procedure. Let us say lean season traffic T is 60 vehicles per day and the duration of harvesting season is small t is 30 days 
and traffic at the peak harvesting season increases by 5 times. That means N is 5. So what would be the AADT for design of the pavement? So N is 5, NT is 5 into 60 that is 300 vehicles per day and therefore AADT will be T that is 60 plus 1.2 into number of days 30 days that is your time of the harvesting season small t into small n 5 into 60 divided by 365 that is 90 vehicles per day that is the AADT for design of the pavement. Now traffic growth rate is estimated either by past trend or you can use econometric model as given in IRC 108 or it can be assumed as 6% in the absence of any specific information available at site. Traffic for the design of rural road is taken in terms of ESAL that is equivalent single axle load applications and for that commercial vehicles with gross laden weight of 3 tons or more along with their axle loading are considered. And here the type of vehicles which are to be considered are trucks, heavy as well as medium, buses and tractor trailers. Payment design is always done for a standard axle load of 80 kN or 8.16 ton. Traffic parameter is generally evaluated in terms of a standard axle load of 80 kN and therefore all axles with load other than standard axle load are converted into equivalent number of standard axles using this fourth power law. And this is similar to what we studied in vehicle damage factor where WX is actual axle load in tons and WS is standard axle load which is 80 kN for single axle and 146.6 kN for tandem axles. Now vehicle damage factor also considered to convert overloading into standard axles. It is a multiplier for converting the number of commercial vehicles of different axle loads to the number of standard axle load repetitions. It is arrived at from axle load survey, but for rural roads, conducting axle load survey in the field may not be very feasible and therefore some indicative VDF values are pr proposed in IRC code. Now, for example, if you have let us say laden heavy commercial vehicle with rear axle load of 10.2 which is legal axle load and front axle load of 5 tons then this 10.2 will give you a VDF of 10.2 upon 8.16 raised to power 4 that is 2.44 and the front axle load of 5 tons will give you the VDF of 0.14 so total VDF for this kind of configuration will be 2.58 Similarly, if the truck is unladen or partially laden with the rear axle load of 6 tons and front axle load of 3 tons, you can calculate what is the VDF value that is 6 upon 8.16 raised to the power 4.29 and corresponding to 3 tons 0 0.02 and that is 0 0.31. If you assume that 20% overloading is there, that means instead of 10.2 ton here in the front axle in the rear axle load you have 12.24 and the front axle load will be in place of 5 it is 6 tons then the VDF will become 5.06 plus 0.29 that is 5.35 and if you further assume that only 10% of the laden heavy vehicles are 20% overloaded then the VDF will be 90% of this 2.58 value which is normal overload, normal loading plus 10% of 5.35 which is 20% overloaded that will be 2.86. Now similarly there are several such examples given in the code and based on these VDF values a recommended VDF values for heavy commercial vehicles are given in this table. For laden weight it is 2.86 and for unladen or partially laden vehicle it is 0.31 and for medium commercial vehicles it, these values are 0.34 and 0.02. Vehicle damage factor as I told you generally 
determined from Excel load survey and this is the, Excel, this is the weighing pad which is used to take the weight of each axle of the truck and you can watch my video on vehicle damage factor to know further details on vehicle damage factor. The cumulative number of applications over the design life can be computed using this equation which is a normal equation but with the difference that here T0 is ESAL per day that is number of commercial vehicles per day in the year of opening multiplied by VDF factor and L here is lane distribution factor. Lane distribution factor is taken 1 for single and intermediate lane roads and 0 0.75 for two lane roads. The, if the proportion if the proportion of heavy commercial vehicles and medium commercial vehicles in the traffic stream are not known particularly for new roads then their breakup can be taken from this table. Depending upon ADT that is average daily traffic you can take the commercial vehicles per day and these commercial vehicles per day will comprise of heavy commercial vehicles and medium commercial vehicles and cumulative ESC applications will be 19,380. Similarly for different values of ADT you can find out what would be the cumulative ESAL applications. There are nine categories of traffic which are considered in the code from T1 to T9. T1 is very light traffic with ESAL applications of 10,000 to 30,000 whereas T9 is heavy traffic with 1.5 million to 2 million standard axles. Now once you know the traffic, the second step in the design is to estimate the subgrade CBR. And this CBR can be estimated by any of the following methods, either by conducting actual CBR test in the laboratory on remodeled sample, or you can also estimate CBR based on soil characteristics or using the equations for plastic and non-plastic soils. Important point while determining CBR is that the code recommends that minimum, recommend, minimum CBR value for rural roads should be 5% even when the traffic volumes are low. And if the actual CBR is less than 5%, the subgrade should be stabilized to achieve a minimum design CBR of 5%. And when the CBR is less than 2%, then top 300 mm of subgrade soil should be replaced with suitable soil having a CBR of 5%. There are 5 categories of soil subgrade based on the CBR value and they are classified as S1 to S5. S1 is very poor soil with CBR less than or equal to 2%. S2 is a poor category of soil with 3 to 4% CBR and 5 to 6 percent is fair soil with S3 and similarly S4 and S5. S5 is very good soil with CBR ranging from 10 to 15 percent. The subgrade strength can be estimated from soil properties also. If you have highly plastic clay and silt, the IS soil specification as CH or MH then typical SOC CBR will be 2 to 3 percent. And similarly, if you have clay sand and silty sand, which is SC and SM as per IS soil classification, then CBR may be 6 to 10 percent. But these are simply preemptive estimates. We can estimate CBR using these equations for plastic soil and this equation for non plastic soil, where P0. 0.075 is the percent passing 75 micron and PI is the plasticity index of the soil and for non-plastic soil it is 75 upon D60 raised to power 0.3581 where D60 is the diameter in millimeter corresponding to 60 percent finer. But actually CVR should be estimated from the soil sample collected from the field and once you know the CBR and design traffic, then you can take a appropriate design catalog from this chart 
these are t1 to t9 are the traffic conditions and s1 to s5 are the soil conditions and you can choose the pavement thickness from this catalog for example if you take let us say t6 as your traffic condition and s2 as your soil condition then this will look like this that you need a 150 millimeter improved subgrade soil because the subgrade for S2 soil is 3 to 4 percent and you have to bring up to 5 percent and then 100 millimeter will be the granular sub base with CBR more than 20 percent above that provide WBM in two layers and above that you provide WBM grade 3 in one layer and then you have OGPC or open grade premix carpet. Subway should be provided as per clause 401 and 403 of MORD specifications for rural roads. This is just one example. There are several charts given in the code for different combinations of soil strength and design traffic for a normal granular course as well as for cemented treated base and sub base and depending upon the traffic conditions, depending upon the soil conditions, you can choose the design thickness of the pavement. IRC code also provides certain guidelines for choosing the bitumen surface treatment and bitumen surfacing will be advantageous where the subgrade is poor that is CBR less than 4% and design traffic is more than 60,000 standard axle load applications and annual rainfall is more than 1000 millimeter. Now this table gives you the criteria for selecting the type of surfacing if the rainfall is over 1500 millimeter per year but traffic is very low agt less than 100 esl then you can have the gravel surfacing also bt can be chosen when traffic is more and rainfall is also high and there are two options given for the bitumen treatment bitumen surface treatment either surface dressing or 20 millimeter premix carpet should be provided as bitumen surface treatment on rural roads. The second is the rehabilitation or upgradation of existing road and this also is a three step process that you first estimate the traffic. The traffic can be estimated based on actual counts on the road. It should be projected for the design period and this traffic should also be analyzed for peak harvesting and lean period similar to that discussed earlier for new roads. The subgrade strength is again in terms of CBR and CBR should be determined on remolded sample of the soil at field moisture content and density experience immediately after the monsoon or it can also be estimated based on DCP test that is dynamic cone penetrometer test and this, these tests should be conducted at every 250 meter interval at a distance of 0.6 to 1.0 meter from the edge of the carriageway. Now once you know the traffic and CBR then we determine overlay thickness requirement. Now for this you again go to the chart and use the same catalog and find out what is the required thickness of the pavement for the design CBR and design traffic. And if this thickness is more than what has been provided at the site, then the difference between the two will be the requirement of overlay. So friends, thank you very much for watching this video. You can write your questions and comments in the comment box. Share the video.